Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we're continuing with the deck text for Ikoria, the new set coming out next week. Um, so I'm taking part in the early streamer event on Wednesday, April 15th. Uh, as such, I'm putting together a bunch of brews uh, for the new cards, kind of some decks that I want to try out. Uh, as in the past uh, set releases, these are all initial brews, so they're untested, but the whole point is to kind of throw something together, get some ideas, get some conversations going, and see what kind of works out when we play at this early streamer event. Um, if you do have any suggestions before we do a deep dive into this deck um, for decks you'd like to see, kind of brews you have already, um, I'm going to open up a page on my YouTube community pay, uh, channel or in any of the comments in my video. Uh, just drop a uh, deck link. Uh, I'm going to be trying to play a couple user decks as well uh, during the early streamer event. So if you have a cool brew that you want to uh, have featured, uh, send it over. I'm going to take a look and I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. Uh, over the course of the early streamer event. If we don't play it right then and there, if it's still a cool deck, then we'll play it um, throughout the this duration of Ikoria um, at some point or another. Uh, so this is a Abzan, black, white, green, graveyard-centric deck. So there's a lot of themes with the Abzan color pairing right now uh, as a sort of graveyard reanimator uh, value from stuff going into your graveyard style deck. Um, so to kind of walk you through, we have uh, Fiend Artisan, uh, or is being referred to as Tarmopod, uh, for its kind of likeness to Tarmogoyf and Birthing Pod. So it's two mana, one one. Gets plus one one for each creature card in your graveyard. So it can become a, quite the chunky boy. Uh, and then if you pay X in a green or black hybrid and tap it, you can sacrifice another creature and then search for any creature in your graveyard with CMC X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Of note, you can only activate this at sorcery speed. You can't do it as an instant. So same restriction as Birthing Pod. Um, so this is, allows us to kind of have a small toolboxy style element to our deck uh, to kind of pick some one ofs So the deck itself, I'm building it uh, similar to the Golgari list that I had previously played, the Blood Hulk deck, where you use Blood for Bones and um, either Molder Hulk to get value or you use Blood for Bones to get Lothless Giant back, and then you burn out your opponent. Um, so I'm kind of using this as a shell. Uh, we still have a good number of creatures in the deck, um, but it's probably something we want to see if we want to tweak that as we go. Uh, Meyer Trident is a good card to put cards into our graveyard, so we'll have a number of cards that their intention is to get cards into our graveyard. Um, so it comes in, it's Death Touch, it's Pseudo Removal, because it could block and trade quite profitably, and it could insulate our life total. Uh, we have Skull Prophet, so this is one of the new cards from the set. Um, so it's 2 mana, 3-1, uh, and we can pay uh, tap it for mana, so we can go from 2 to 4 mana. There's a number of 4 drops in our deck we can uh, ramp into, uh, or we can use it to tap, and it's a reoccurring source of putting 2 cards into our graveyard. Uh, Death's Oasis is a card I'm still on the fence of. I want to try it out to see how it works in practice, but it's a 3 mana enchantment. Uh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into the graveyard, then you return a card with CMC less than that creature's converted mana cost uh, from your graveyard to your hand. So it's a way to recur value that way there, and then you can sacrifice it and gain life equal to the greatest CMC. Not as relevant the last part, but it's a way to kind of recycle value on creatures. So if, say, your Woe dies, you can get back your Mire Triton and stuff like that. With us having this many two drops, we might want to consider having some one drops in the deck, but I want to see how this plays out in practice. A couple Gorging Vultures, uh, just to put cards into our graveyard again, gains us some life. Woe Striders, a couple that can be played out of the graveyard, also plays around Exile. I don't know how much Elspeth Conquers Death we'll be seeing, uh, but it's a way to kind of sack stuff around the, ex the Exile effects. Uh, four, uh, three blood for bones get stuff back from our graveyard. Uh, so you sack a creature, one creature comes back from your graveyard to the battlefield, and the other goes to your hand. Of note, if you have a Lotlith Giant out and you sack the Lotlith Giant, the sack happens first because it's an additional cost, and then you can bring back that same Lotlith Giant. So cool interaction there. Uh, Boneyard Lurker is one of the mutate cards we want to try out in the deck. Uh, so it's a four mana, four, four normally, and then it can mutate for four as well. And whenever this creature uh, mutates, return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Again, it's just recycling value that way there. So we want to get stuff into our graveyard, use it as a second hand, and get some value from doing that. Um, I got one Dire Bat. Uh, so it's something that I could fetch for with the Fiend Artisan is my theory. Uh, its mutate cost is kind of high. 
Um, but it's a 4 mana, 3-3 three, three flash flying. And whenever it mutates, destroy target, planeswalker, or opponent, uh, planeswalker, creature, and opponent controls. Its mutate cost is 6. So I want to see how it works. It might be something we want to go more of. Um, but right now, having one ofs is not really one ofs. When you have Fiend Artisan in the deck, it can theoretically go and fetch these. Um, playing two Luminous Blue, uh, Broodmothers. So this is another uh, useful card in the deck. Um, when stuff dies, so instead of like the Midnight Reaper style effect where you draw cards, when stuff dies, they just come back to the battlefield with flying counters on them. Uh, and it re-triggers all these ETB effects again. So it's kind of recycled value there. It's like uh, a couple of Vraskas. I've always liked Vraska in these shells. Deals with smaller CMC creatures or permanents. Uh, I can When you flood out, it can draw cards for you. It can sack stuff uh, that you've kind of gotten your value out of. And then it can kind of just keep the engine churning. Uh, Nethrami. Neth Nethroi. Nethroi. We'll try that. Nethroi. Apex of Death. Um, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, Death Touch, Life Link. Uh, it can mutate for 7 mana, 4 green, white, hybrid, black, black. Uh, Death Touch, Life Link. Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creatures with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, so this is a nice way to kind of bring everything back. And then you can kind of recycle there. So from a mutate threat standpoint, you have Nathrami, and then you have the three creatures here. Uh, should be enough. Everything in our uh, deck can mutate except for the Skull Prophet. So going to start with there. Um, I'm a little hesitant with the mutate to go two overboard. It does open you up to get like two for one, three for one, four for one. So I think that's a good starting point. Uh, I also don't know if five, uh, sorry, if three of these five fives is too many, but we'll play it out, see how it goes. Two Lotless Giant, when it enters the battlefield, deals one damage to target opponent for each creature card in your graveyard. So this is kind of the combo -y element. And then you have Mulder Hulk, which costs one less for each creature in your graveyard. When it comes back from the graveyard, it brings a land along with it, so it kind of ramps you that way. Uh, so it's a nice interaction there. And then mana base-wise... Oh, sorry, forgot. Forgot. I don't know if we're going to be casting this, but if we cast it, it's going to be fun. Uh, this is the Eerie Ultimatum. It's the new uh, Ultimatum uh, specials uh, series. Um, so, 7 mana. 2 white, 3 black, 2 green. If you can get that working, power to you. Uh, return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this can just bring back upwards of 10 plus things. Um, it also says permanent, so that gets your lands back too. Uh, so all those lines we mull over. So I want to see it out. It might be something we want to play more of. Um, I'm probably going to be building a Golos Ultimatum deck uh, just to play them all, the Mardu one, this one, everything that I can. Um, but this is something we want to try out. Mana base wise, just looking at that, we got a one castle, a bunch of shock lands. We have the tried land uh, with Abzan, taps for all three colors. And then we have just a couple temples just to uh, fix up the mana and then just some basics here as well. Our mana base is quite like particular. Um, you're trying to go like black, black, all three colors. Um, you have some black, you have some double white, you have some double black, you have all three colors, you have the rainbow of Abzan colors here. So we wanna make sure that we can hit our spells on time. Um, so these events are best of one, so I'm not putting together sideboards right now. Um, if you are interested in sideboard, we can play this deck again afterwards, or I can put together something with in terms of sideboard. Once we kind of know what the meta is like, I usually don't like building sideboards until we know what you're trying to sideboard against. If we're playing, say, everything's control deck, your sideboard plan is going to be different than if everything is an aggressive deck. So this wraps up this one here. As mentioned from the, the onset, if there are any decks you'd be interested in seeing, uh, do let me know. I'm going to be pumping out a bunch of these. I have a bunch of listed on my Aetherhub account with the IKO tag at the beginning. Um, I'm adding them in as we go along, making tweaks. There's some cards that are still missing to be imported, um, so there'll be some deck lists there. Uh, if I missed anything obvious, do let me know. Um, try to go through as many of the spoilers as possible. There are a lot, um, but this is kind of this idea here. Uh, so we'll be putting out probably a few of these a day as we lead up to the event. The event, as I mentioned, is on April 15th. I'll be streaming from around noon, 1 o'clock Eastern uh, to the evening. Um, so if you can stop by on Twitch, that'd be awesome if you could. 
If not, everything that I will be playing will be archived and uploaded to YouTube shortly thereafter. Thanks for stopping by and have a great one.